Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. All I fortress of glory divine. Hail salvation, patches of
Yes, we are going to declare that, Lord, you are able. Unaweza. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. Amen. Let's just dance for the Lord. Not just uh, quickly, but just slowly. Amen. You are able.
before the Lord and adore him as we are coming before him and to worship the Lord. Say that, Lord, you are Lord. And no one can worship you if really is not myself. So worship the Lord and say that, Lord, 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 you are worthy. Amen. can worship you but me or can worship you for me but me this morning just connect with the Lord you came to chapel because you desired him don't just be in the house of the Lord but desire to meet with the God of the house of God this morning just ascribe praises to him ascribe glory to him give him praise he's worthy Lord we honor your name this morning you are the great I am the God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we can ask above our imaginations. This morning, Lord, we honor you as the omnipotent God, God who is El Shaddai, the God who makes a way where there is no way, the God who moves the mountains from our paths, the God who clears the path for our destiny. We give you praise for you are worthy. All that you have made will worship you. Everything that has breath will worship you and praise your name, Lord. Yahweh, we honor your name. Great is your faithfulness this morning. Hallelujah. You are the God who keeps covenant. You are the God who remembers your words to a thousand generations. And from everlasting to everlasting, oh God, your mercies are towards us. You are good and gracious and abundant in mercy. Have your way in this place, oh God. Be enthroned in the praises of your people. 
be enthroned in the hearts of your people this morning. Arise, O oh God, and scatter every enemy. We bless your name, Lord. We give you praise. We want to pray for this community this morning. Lord, we welcome you, Lord, to work wonders in our midst. You are a wonder-working God, a God who is fearful in praises, a God who does wonders. Do wonders in our homes. Do wonders in our hearts and in every circumstance before us this morning. Do amazing things in this service, oh God. We want to remember Teresa who lost the dad our student trees the lord we just want to commit her to you this morning and we pray your comfort for that family we want to pray father lord that you intervene in every situation of sickness and distress within our community members oh lord where there is lack father provide supply supply abundantly lord we pray surprises will begin to bombard your people because you're a god who does wonderful things Lord, we thank you, and we are happy to just be in your presence. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for making it possible for every single one of us to approach the Father boldly this morning. We receive grace for every situation. We receive mercy for every sleep, every failure, every fall, so that we can be before God with confidence, knowing that we are loved and accepted this morning. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord this morning. Amen. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. It's good to see you. Please, let's give a good hand to our worship team. Thank you. Thank you, worship team, for a job well done. Uh, it's great to see you. Welcome back from uh, Mashuja celebrations. And um, I pray that also in, in your lifetime, you and I, we will, we will also make our own life's count so that uh, if the next generation was to come uh, be beyond our tombstones there would be something for which you'll be remembered for um, Jesus once cast a fig tree not because he was given to tantrums or fits of rage but it was just a, an object a lesson directed to his disciples so the following day when he cast the fig tree, it didn't dry immediately, but the following day, as they passed by, the disciples noticed, hey, this thing actually dried up. And so one of them pointed, uh, drew Jesus' attention to the incident and said, well, the fig tree that you cast has died. And Jesus, just a matter of fact, uh, uh, matter of factly just answered and said, just have faith in God. Or in the original, just have the faith of God. And uh, the faith of God is a kind that speaks to things the way you want them to, to be. They speak to circumstances, not what there is, but what you want to see. Uh, and, and so in our pursuit of our dreams, many things will stand in our face saying, you know what, you will not be able to go any further. But Jesus was teaching us that actually you can use your word to direct your circumstances to the outcome you want to see. Uh, that's, not just some, that's not just name it and claim it uh, philosophy. It is a principle anchored in God's words from Genesis that actually our words can determine our destiny. So let's continue to speak uh, the faith that we draw from God's word to our circumstances, regardless of where we are uh, in our own personal lives, regardless of what anxieties may be there or challenges. Speak God's words to that mountain. Amen? And begin to see it change and begin to see your situation if, uh, turned around. Um, I want to bring an announcement. Tomorrow, the CU have a very, very, very special service for the young people, both the ladies and the gents. Uh, we have uh, Professor Mbogo and Dr. Mbogo, that's her husband and her wife, members of this community. They will be sharing on, the, on a topic they are calling, Why Wait? You know, um, I will not uh, expound on that. Uh, please be curious enough as a young person to show up tomorrow here from 6.30 all the way to 8.30. This is uh, an experienced couple that I'm sure has a lot of things in their, you know, under their sleeves and belt to just be able to share with you for free. Can you imagine? And also want to remind you that tomorrow we have our grace groups and we welcome all of you to just partake and be part and parcel of those small group fellowships. Uh, we want to now invite Chaplin to, be, to bring greetings and also pray. Okay, Chaplin is giving me a heads up to just continue. And so today we are still blessed to have 
Reverend Lucas Owako with us. He uh, began and commenced uh, sharing with us on, um, uh, from the book of Acts, uh, and uh, he will be taking us through several episodes of exposition from that book. And uh, because already Chaplin uh, took a while to introduce him last time, I'll just remind you that he's a continuing student here with us, but also an alumnus of AIU and serving currently as, as, as a curate at uh, St. Francis uh, just here in Karen. So please uh, put your hands together as we receive Reverend Lucas to just come and continue where he left off last week. Keep just encouraging him until he, he, he reaches here. Welcome, sir. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Glad to be back here this morning as we continue with our reflections on the book of Acts, which we started a couple of weeks ago. And in our previous session, um, we reflected on preparedness for witness, and that is what we are looking at uh, in our expositions this semester, preparedness for witness. And last time we did talk about the need for us as we prepare and as God prepares us uh, for witness to reorient our vision of the kingdom of God, that our effectiveness in being witnesses for Christ will in many ways depend on and be shaped by what we think about the kingdom of God in a world and at a time in which people are building their own kingdoms, that we are reminded of Jesus' correction as the disciples ask that question. Are you now going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And he corrects them and says, no, it is not for you to know the times and seasons the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses. Not only in your locality, it's not about Israel, it is not about your church, it is not about your kingdom, but in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. This morning, we look at prepared, prepared for witness through personal and intimate knowledge of Christ. Prepared for witness through personal and intimate knowledge of Christ. Now, my most natural drift uh, after the session last time would have been to look at prepared for witness through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, but I did take occasion and listen to the sermons that have been preached here, and Chaplain did do a very thorough job on the Holy Spirit, and so I do believe that we are, um, with, that is taken care of. So I, I jump to what would have been probably the third, which is uh, prepared for witness through personal and intimate knowledge of Christ. And in our final session, we will be looking at prepared for witness through building communities of faith. So personal and intimate knowledge of Christ. Our Lord and our God, we are grateful to you that we have the privilege and opportunity this morning to sit at your feet, to reflect together on your word. We pray that, Father, as we do this, speak to us through your Holy Spirit. Encounter each and every one of us in the areas where you know that we need you most. And may your voice be so clear, dear Lord, and may your grace abound as we hear and as we purpose to obey and to live it out. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. A while back, there was something that happened on our uh, television screens. There was an aircraft accident somewhere in Lake Nakuru, and, and after this, you can probably Google and check this out. And there was a guy, when the media people went there to say, you know, what happened? Uh, so this aircraft had crashed on the lake. And there was a guy there who was explaining and describing what had happened. Um, and of course, when the media come uh, to such a place where there has been something, they want to look for witnesses. They want to look for who are the people who saw it? 
and, and can you tell us what happened? And so the guy got quite some airtime uh, explaining what had happened. A long while later, the governor of Nyeri died in a road accident somewhere on the Thika superhighway. And when the media arrived to ask, so what happened? Lo and behold, the same person was there. And he gave a blow-by-blow blow account of what happened. And, and immediately the news, you see, the, the death of, 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 of governor uh, was, a, was big news. And so it hit the screens, it, 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 it captured the attention of the country, and everyone was focused on that. But as the day rolled by, people started asking, something is not adding up. How come? Isn't this the guy who was in Nakuru? So people said, how, how, how is it that every major accident that happens, you are around? Then someone actually recollected that the same guy gave a press conference, or not press conference, but you know, gave a, a statement or two at the Westgate terror attack. And people started saying, no, something is not adding up. But the second thing that people were raising questions with about the one of the Nyeri governor was because the crash had happened so early in the morning because the governor was actually rushing for a TV interview or a radio interview, one of the two, in Nairobi, which was to start, I think, at 6 a.m. So he left Nyeri pretty early. This accident happened, you know, at dawn when it was dark. So as the day rolled on, people started asking, who is this man? And the man became known as the professional witness. Uh, you can check him out after this. But soon it was realized that this was actually a guy who for some particular reason decided that he would avail himself as a witness whenever the TV cameras were coming. But here is the problem. The problem is that he could, not be, he could not have full knowledge of the accidents that were going to happen. So what would he do? He would hear the news of an accident that had happened, and then he would rush there. And then he would get there and say, I am here, I, I saw it. And then he would begin creating his stories, fake stories and rumors that he has gathered from around, and present them as a witness. Prepared for witness through personal and intimate knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I come this morning to share this with you. As a fellow sojourner in the journey of life, who, one who is, who is not perfect, one who, who is often frail, sometimes doubting, sometimes failing, sometimes questioning, sometimes grumbling and discontent, and sometimes even blinded to the reality of who God is, and what his demands are, and what his promises are to his people. I come as one who many times has not followed the Lord as closely and as intimately as I would have wished. Yet I also come with this testimony, that I am born again, and I am in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. That I have a distinct recollection that at some point in my life I made a deliberate decision to follow the Lord Jesus Christ and to subject my life under his lordship. As I come to you this morning, I speak a God whom I can confidently say that I know. And I say that I know the Lord Jesus Christ because I have journeyed with him. I know him because we interact. I know him because he is not a stranger, but he is a friend. And he has been a companion in the journey of life for a number of years now, and I am not in doubt that I have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He has been my close friend through various seasons of life. He has been my friend through the tumultuous years of teenage and youth as I got to know the Lord as a teenager. He has been my friend and companion through the slippery path of seeking to set up a family and to grow. He has been my companion through a career life that has been characterized by very many transitions, but the Lord has been there as a true and close friend. I have seen him protect, provide, 
shield, heal, strengthen, forgive, and guide me. And I can confidently say that it is a beautiful thing to walk with the Lord. That it is a paying, it is a rewarding experience to know the Lord Jesus Christ and to journey through the seasons of life with him. And so through this life and experience, God has affirmed in me and reminded me constantly that I can only be a witness about a God whom I know. That I cannot be a witness about a God that I do not know. That I cannot be a witness who is a rumor monger, creating stories and sharing rumors and hearsay that I have gathered from people around. That I cannot be a professional witness. Who is a witness? A witness is a person who has and is able to give accurate information about an occurrence because they were present as it occurs and they have seen or experienced it. A person who, who has information and accurate information about an occurrence. We cannot be mere professional witnesses retelling things that we hardly know about for monetary rewards or for the fleeting minutes of fame. Sadly, many Christians step out into the arena of Christian service, whether that is in church or in the wider society where a majority of us here this morning are headed to serve. But many of us step out into the arena of Christian service to represent a God whom they neither know nor knows them. Now Jesus' command that the disciples should go and be witnesses was premised on their prior and continuing intimate knowledge of who he is and what he had done for them. When Jesus commands them and says, you will receive the Holy Spirit, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he is premising the command that you will be witnesses on their prior and continuing knowledge of who he is and what he has done for them and continues to do for them. To that extent, I want to draw our attention to the Great Commission as is captured by the author of the Acts of the Apostles, who is Luke, in his 24th chapter, reading from verse 44. Luke writes in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verse 44 to 48, and he says, Luke writes and says, Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Jesus is telling them, there is what I told you, that certain things are to happen, that you would experience certain things. And he tells them, you are witnesses of these things. There is something, an experience with God to which we are witnesses. We, when we are commanded and commissioned to go forth and witness we are witnesses of a message. We are witnesses of a reality, of a God who is at work in humanity, expanding his kingdom, bringing human beings and communities and society under the growing rule of God. How does Luke in Acts address this theme about the knowledge of God whom we are to witness? First, the apostles are portrayed as witnesses of his resurrection. They were witnesses of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Chapter 1 
of Acts verse 1 to 3. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day when he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. Chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. This is the Apostle Peter addressing the leadership of the Jewish community, the religious leaders, after the healing of the crippled beggar at the gate of the temple. And people are questioning, and they're asking, what is it? And Peter addresses them, and in part of his address he says, but you denied the holy and righteous one and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To these we are witnesses. Peter is saying we saw it with our own eyes. We heard you ask for Barabbas and we saw Jesus Christ risen from the dead. The fact of the resurrection of Jesus would soon become a very critical argument in the Christian life and mission right from the beginning in the early church to the present day. Why? Because on it hinges the veracity of the Christian faith. The gospel according to St. Matthew does tell us about that twist in the narrative. When those guys, Jesus has risen from the dead, and then they tell them, the guards, when you go to Pilate, don't tell him that you did not find the body. Tell him that he fell asleep and we will cover up for you. It has been absolutely critical to the opponents of the Christian message that Jesus be portrayed not as risen from the dead. Why? Because on that truth hinges the veracity of the Christian faith. As the Apostle Paul would later say, if Christ did not rise from the dead, then our faith is useless. We are lost in our sins, and in actual fact, the whole AIU community, we are wasting time over here. If Jesus did not rise from the dead, then there is no Christian faith. Even today, an unbelieving, cynical, and sometimes a hostile world pushes back against the Christian claim that Jesus is alive and Jesus is coming again. Why? Because the world is more comfortable with a Jesus who was once good, but is actually dead. They would sooner rather than later push him back into the tomb and they silence him because a dead Jesus has no demands for the way that we live. A dead Jesus would not demand our loyalty, our devotion, and our worship. He would be a Jesus who is silenced forever. There would be no kingdom to submit to, no lordship to proclaim. Brothers and sisters, as we step out to be witnesses for Jesus, our only weapon here is an intimate experience with Jesus. We may not have scientific proof about the resurrection. You may not be well versed in the historical and philosophical defenses of Jesus' resurrection. We may not have all the arguments. But I know that Jesus is alive because he is my friend. I know that Jesus is alive because we often speak with one another. I know that Jesus is alive because I encounter him every so often. We are witnesses of the resurrection of Jesus. We must face a cynical, questioning, sometimes hostile world with a conviction that Jesus is alive. And that his being alive is a reality that we live on a daily basis. It was critical to the early church. It was critical to the witness of the apostles and it is critical to our witness today. Secondly, this knowledge was a prerequisite for Christian service. This knowledge of God, of Christ, this intimate and personal knowledge was a prerequisite for Christian ministry and service. Chapter 1 of Acts, verse 21 to 22. 
the apostles are having conversation about Judas and Peter does rise and say, look guys, Judas is no more. This happened as it was written. This has fulfilled the prophecy. And the same prophecy did say, let someone else take his office. Peter says, so one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us. One of these men must become with us witnesses to his resurrection. It is clear from the scriptures that ministry is an outflow of a relationship with Jesus. And the apostles demanded that an appointment to service would be based on a personal knowledge of Jesus Christ. When Christ the Lord wanted to use Saul of Tarsus, he revealed himself to Saul in chapter 9 on the road to Damascus. And he put Saul on a new path. And in a powerful act of symbolism, scales fell from the eyes of Saul and he had a new vision. He had a new revelation. He had encountered the Lord. He had to have that encounter. There was no way of turning the unbelieving Saul into the Apostle Paul without a personal, unique encounter with Christ. But you see, Paul would later on, as Luke records in the 26th chapter, verse 15 onwards, Luke would later write, as Paul is giving his testimony before the governor. Verse 15 of Luke, of, of Acts chapter 26. And I said, he's rec recounting his testimony before the authorities. And I said, who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you as a servant and witness to the things in which you have seen me and to those in which I will appear to you. Delivering you from your people and from the Gentiles to whom I am sending you. To open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. The Lord Jesus Christ reveals himself to Saul. And Paul says, I remember. And he said, I am sending you as a witness about the things that I have now revealed to you and about the things that I will continue to show you on our journey of friendship moving forward. It was and continues to be a prerequisite for Christian service. We are here, many of us who are studying theology or related courses, but also many of us who are studying other courses. But the reality is that if we, any one of us, is to step forth to serve a needy world as we believe in AIU, a prerequisite for that service is that we have a personal, intimate, and continuing relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Number three, this personal an intimate relationship with Christ cannot be faked. It cannot be faked. You cannot fake your way around it. You see, right from the beginning of the church, con men and charlatans have always tried to mimic the Christian life and ministry for their own selfish gain. But God does make it clear that he frowns on all such and he will soon expose and judge that kind of behavior. We see a number of that in the Acts of the Apostles, beginning with the experience of Ananias and his wife, Sapphira, who tried to mimic Christian devotion, to present a view that was not authentic about who they were in standing in the Christian community and in service. And their hypocrisy was revealed. It was exposed with devastating results. In Acts chapter 8, verse 17 to 23, we see Simon, Simon the sorcerer, sees the power of Christ at work. And the Bible says, 
he tells Peter, please give me this power also so that I can, anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. And he offered money. And Peter tells him, may you perish with your money and with your gift. Attempts to mimic. You see, he did not have it, but he wants to buy it. Other fellows called the sons of Sceva. Acts chapter 19. And you know, these guys are going around. The Bible says that they went around saying, in the name of Christ whom Paul preaches, I command you, the demons, to leave. And Luke writes and says, one day, the demon said, okay, Christ, I know. Paul, I also know. But I don't know you. Who do you think you are? And that the man who was possessed landed on them and whipped them. Let me read it. Verse 14 of Acts chapter 19. Seven sons of Sceva, Jewish priest, were doing this. One day, the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and I know about Paul, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a thorough beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. Attempt to mimic, to fake and there will continue to be attempts to mimic and to fake the experience of the Christian faith. But that is not going to be possible. You know why? Because even when we try and succeed to mimic it and to fake it, before we are exposed, there will be no fruit. It will be a dry attempt. We will be telling the demons to leave, but then we will look us in the eye and say, I don't know you. We will be acting as professional witnesses to a world that will not listen. Amazingly, amazingly, the world actually knows. Don't you hear sometimes when we try to witness, they say, ah, you are doing, but the things you are doing, Akuna, they know. They know what to expect of the Christians. They know what to expect of us believers. They may reject our message. They may stand from a distance and say, you know, and explain and so on and so forth. But the world knows. And when they look at an authentic Christian, the world knows an authentic Christian when they see one, even when they don't admit it. Lastly, those of us who know Christ will be bold and effective in our witness. We see Paul, we see Peter, bold in witness, charging forth, proclaiming the kingdom, winning disciples for Christ, even when they were opposed, when they were persecuted, when they were resisted. The Apostle Peter would later write in his second letter, chapter 1, he says, we did not follow cleverly invented stories when we told you about the power of the coming kingdom. But we were eyewitnesses of these truths. We saw, we heard the voice on the sacred mountain. Peter is saying, the things of which we are witnesses are not rumors. They are things we have seen and heard. The Apostle John writes in the first chapter of his letter, verse 1, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon, and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life that was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testified to it, and proclaimed to you eternal life, which was with the Father, and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. That which we have seen, that which we have heard with our ears, that which we have witnessed, that which we have touched with our hands, that is the Christ that we proclaim to a world that is in need. That which we have experienced through an initial life-transforming and life-changing experience that we can say, yes, 
I know that at some point in the course of my life, I exchanged my loyalties and surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. This knowledge of Christ comes through that initial surrender. As we say, yes, Lord, here I am, I give myself to you. But it also comes as we daily make a choice to keep, sustain, and grow in our friendship with him. It cannot be a rumor about a Christ that we met and encountered in the year 1998, and that is all that we have. The world looks at us for solutions. It looks at us for the voice of God. What does your God have to say about this situation? It is about a Christ that we are in experiencing on a daily basis. Brothers and sisters, our mandate to be witnesses to the world requires us to have an intimate, growing, continuing knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. And as we pray this morning, in the course of our sharing, I do not know whether it could be that the Lord is challenging you, the Lord is speaking to you about a certain area in your life, and he's saying, yes, we have something that we need to sort. Do you have something that you need to sort with the Lord? And if it be so, as I make this prayer, I would ask you to raise your hand that we commit you to the Lord in prayer. But I would also ask you, even as you raise your hand, to make a commitment to work on it. Talk to someone about it. Seek help, seek counsel, even as we pray together. If you have an area, an issue, and you're saying, Lord, help me so that I may be a genuine witness for you, please do raise your hand as we pray together. Our God and our Father, in the, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are grateful to you that you have given us the privilege to be not only your children, Lord, but your co-workers in your vineyard sent forth as witnesses. Heavenly Father, Lord of power and grace, we pray that where we are failing in our knowledge of you, may you draw us in, O oh God. Lord, your children are here, and some are saying, yes, Lord, I have things to sort out with you. I may not know what they are, but you do. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you help them. May you send them help from above. Lord, may you strengthen the weak. May you restore the fallen. May you heal those who are broken. And Father, may you renew our faith. May you renew our joy this morning. Glorify yourself in us and through us. And by your spirit, Lord, work out in us an intimate, personal, and growing relationship with you. We bless you and we praise you. Through Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Thank you very much, uh, Reverend Lucas Owako, for that message. May the Lord help us to sort out the issues surrounding our witness. We want to thank you all for joining us for this chapel service. Those who joined us virtually, we invite you again on Tuesday at 10 o'clock for our service. The Christian Union is making a small correction that uh, the, the meeting will be today in the evening at 6.30. The session with the doctor, doctor and Professor Bobo uh, will be today at 7 o'clock to 8.30 as indicated there, so please note. Any young person who misses such interactive sessions that deal with pertinent and poignant issues of life uh, will have him or herself to blame in the days to come. Listen to what people are hearing and participate in the life that you want to live. So thank you 
let us kindly join together in the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Thank you. Remember to join your grace groups tomorrow. Thank you. God bless you.